Hello everyone and welcome back to Reentry, which is a space simulator game currently in early access that allows you to directly control the Mercury, Gemini or Apollo spacecraft involving a whole lot of flicking of switches and manipulation of computers. In this case, I wanted to try out docking Gemini to an Agena. And so this is primarily a docking video, if you will. But first we have to launch. And so I get the Gemini spacecraft ready, as you can see, uh, turning on the power switches. Those are the squib batteries. And then I have to get the fuel cells ready. And it took me a while to remember where things were. Well, I don't have to remember. I just have to find the little blue light that highlights it. Uh, you can run the checklists that come with the game. And so that's very convenient. Uh, in fact, this is pretty high class. Uh, comparing to flight sim planes, for instance, uh, this is uh, top-notch as far as checklist help comes. <laughs> and there's the computer there, by the way. It's not a very complex computer, it just stores data and retrieves data. And so it's not at the level of the Apollo spacecraft's computer. Uh, there we have the environmental systems at the top there, and so air pumps and then the suit fan we'll have to turn on. And there's all to, uh, this is the final check before launch, basically. And yeah, docking to Agena I have never done before. And it turns out that I needed some help by the end. But we'll see about that. Uh, that is the platform. Uh, that's controlling how things are oriented. And then there's attitude control that determines how I'm controlling the spacecraft there. But anyway, that's all later. Right now it's all automated for launch. In fact, it'll launch whether you've got all that stuff done or not. Uh, but whether you've got all that stuff done or not properly will determine whether everything else goes all right too. And I think I must have gotten something wrong, perhaps with the computer startup, uh, because we end up having a bit of a problem circularizing. But we'll get to that. So you can see some of the views. I'm going through this assuming you haven't watched my previous re-entry videos because it's been a little bit of a time and there are a lot of features to re-entry that weren't there when I made my previous videos for instance people have been landing on the moon and well, apparently walking on the moon uh, so and EVA is possible so now you as an astronaut can get out of the spacecraft so there was a staging. I'm cutting the launch short here. Uh, and that is the end of the launch. And now we have to separate from the second stage of the launch vehicle, the Titan rocket. And this is all being done during a live stream. So that's how I was able to get help uh, for the whole business. It had been a long time since I did the Gemini training mission, so I wasn't really current with the spacecraft, if you will. And... I've mostly been focusing on Apollo for like the past years or so. Anyway, I, I don't know how long it's been. But here we go, we're activating the thrusters. Ooh, that was a little bit weird, but it's automatically thrusting a bit. And I don't know if that was because of my joystick settings or whether it's just pre-programmed to move away from the second stage. I think it's just pre-programmed to move away. And this is the nose cone on the top of the Gemini that's covering the docking apparatus and sensors at the top of it. And so we let go of that. That doesn't apparently make any sound at the moment. And then we have to adjust our orbit a bit. Apparently we moved forward too much, so I'm moving back here. And that zeroes out the uh, delta Vs there. The delta Vs are in feet per second, you'll note. That's, that's how NASA did it back then. Anyway, uh, so we don't need those anymore. We can turn off the main... I, I don't know why we're turning off the main batteries, to be honest, but, uh, um, well, that's what the checklist says, so. The, the retro squibs we don't need, that makes sense. We do have the fuel cells still on, so. Yeah, I guess we're just not discharging the main batteries directly. The music, incidentally, isn't the game's own music. It does have music. Uh, but I turned that off and I'm using my uh, normal streaming playlist, which is OC Remix plus some game soundtracks I found are safe for streaming. Anyway, here we go, just completing the checklist and we are taking a look at our orbit. Uh, you can see we're in the lower orbit underneath the Agena and so that's how we're going to rendezvous. We're catching up to it. And here I'm going to... I was 
I was trying to do the platform alignment, but then uh, the person who most wanted me to play re-entry uh, told me I didn't have to do the platform alignment, which was suspicious. I should have been suspicious of that right away. But Roger, I went, DCS. okay, we went to circularized orbit. And so we have the timing there. And they tell me to get my information from the computer. So the readout retrieves the information. Then you can clear the thing to get a new register. It's just got it's just storing stuff and then you can enter information using the enter button if you want to type that information in. It can count information down. Though I didn't have much success with that. I think maybe I had to flick a switch or something for that. I don't know. So we're just reading information as they have told me. But uh, it's, uh, that was supposed to tick down. That was supposed to be a timer that ticks down and it didn't really. But we've got the timer ticking down in the current object objective box at the top of the screen. And so we got to the point where I'm going to be doing the circularization burn in the prograde direction, it says. And I should have just put it on SEF instead of uh, messing around with it, but they had not told me to put it on SEF, so I didn't. That was probably a mistake. I think what happened was we pulled down our apoapsis instead of pushing up our periapsis on this burn. It still zeroed it out, but um, I don't understand why it zeroed it out, to be honest. I mean, well, I guess we're, but we're, we're pushing... I don't understand. Uh, something went wrong here, is the point. And we are not going to end up in exactly the right orbit for them to go on to the next step. And that uh, precipitates a lot of the fun of this particular adventure at that point. So here we've uh, done the prograde retrograde part, which is the first number. And then there's a certain lateral amount, just one feet per second, one foot per second that we had to correct there. Um, that little display with the delta V's is called the IVI's. And then I get my orbital information, but we're not circular. We we're supposed to be, but we're not. A circularization is supposed to help with the rendezvous because they're going to calculate a Hohmann transfer. And Hohmann transfers are best calculated by circular orbits. So, that, that's all a little bit weird. And we can't request target burns. I try, eventually. And they're just going to say, nope, you can't do it. I try to manually circularize, but we're in the wrong place right now anyway. So it's got to push both of them up and that's not going to circularize. We'd have to wait. I request target burn there and they say no, go circularize the orbit. So I decide, well, even if I try to go ahead and get the rendezvous information, it might be messed up. I can close manually to Agena as long as I can see the information in the orbit view here. And so I just set about catching up to it the way we would normally do in Kerbal Space Program. You can see my little red dot is very close to the little uh, bluish white dot, which is Agena. And right around there, we're within, you know, maybe two miles, three miles of Agena. I can't see it through the window though. And at this point, I haven't activated my radar because I forgot how to do that. Uh, to get the range to Agena, uh, there is a dial that you'll see later on, once I get it enabled, uh, that will show us our range to Agena. But here I'm just uh, circularizing here, trying to match orbits with Agena, basically station keeping at this level. And But the IVIs do not read zero at this point because everything sort of messed up. But there I'm circular. See, I'm very circular and we're very close to Agena. And so I decided to request a target burn. But since it's a Hohmann transfer and we're really, really close to the target's orbit, uh, the burn is in 57 days, which would outstrip our fuel cell fuel. It's only 4.6 meters per second to delta V, so that's how you can tell we're really, really close to the target's orbit. But obviously that burn time is not going to be doable. Um, because the Holman transfer wouldn't be the thing that you would do when you're this close to the target. You'd just do the thing where you, you know, cancel out relative velocity and point at the target, that kind of thing. You know, you close in manually. But I don't, uh, now I'm getting the radar data there. That's the need, the big needle on that. That's the range. And then this, the inner needle on that dial was the range rate. That's how quickly you're closing. Uh, so I've got that data going. And I'm trying to do it manually. 
I haven't gotten the additional help yet at this point. Uh, eventually, Hector Mello and uh, a few others pop in to assist. Uh, these are the re-entry experts. So, yeah, there I'm, I'm basically uh, two, three miles away from Magina right now. And closing slowly. But I can't see it. And I don't have my rates to it in the three axes the way I would like. Which the IVIs can show. I also don't have the pointer at the target. That's the next thing we managed to fix. I think this was before Hector Mello showed up. Uh, so, but shortly after, uh, he might have told me how to do this or somebody else might have told me how to do that. So now the crosshairs, the yellow lines on the nav ball are showing me where the target is. I set my control to free, uh, which basically makes it the way KSP uh, controls the thing without SAS on. So that is SAS not on, having it on free. Uh, or, sorry, direct. Sorry, direct. So... The attitude control on direct is like SAS uh, being off. And now Hector Mello told me how to get the IVIs to show me the range to target. That only works if you're lined up. The reason I wanted SAS off is otherwise it'd constantly try and fight me. And rate command there is like SAS on in Kerbal Space Program. So here we're seeing the numbers tick there. And it's showing me whether I have to go up or down or left or right. Except that's upside down on the left or right because we're upside down. It's just like that. So we have to zero those out. But the first number, the prograde retrograde, doesn't show up. That actually turns into the ranged target for this. Uh, so that doesn't show up until it's under 1,000 feet because there's only three digits. So here uh, I painstakingly try and zero it out. We're we're very far away at this point. You know, we're not at the 2-3 uh, mile level. I kept messing around with it, so we ended up with more distance. So I had to start that whole process from further away. But now we're closing below a thousand feet. I'm retroing because we're closing rather fast, so I'm slowing down here. Grows up to the target, and now we're within 200 feet, which is really, really close. And at this point, we can definitely see Agena, uh, except I need to change my point of view. Uh, the I'm at the panel view. There's the window view, if you will. And then we can sort of see Agena there. And so I need to turn on the lights on Agena. We're really close. That's 79 feet, but I'm trying to station keep. And so we're just zeroing things out and making sure we're not going to collide with it. And then I have to move on to the pilot side, which has the controls for getting the lights on on Agena. That's the encoder and the external lights. I have to be reminded to do that. All, all this I'm doing with help at this point because I did not remember any of this or did not learn any of this in the first place. So we're using the encoder to, that's that little bit down there, in order to send the signal to Agena to turn on its lights. And now it's got a little beacon light there. Um, the codes for the encoder are in the mission pad. There's a section on the mission pad for those codes. So, but they were just telling me in chat during the live stream what those were. And external lights and uh, there's an index that we have on, it's basically a poll on the Gemini capsule around its nose. You can see the pole there, and that's to help line up with the, I guess, the antenna on Agena. So that helps us figure out what our roll orientation ought to be. I said to direct to roll there so that it doesn't fight me while I'm trying to roll. And I'm uh, those uh, approach lights, there are approach lights extending from the nose of Agena. Those are not really there on the real Agena. Those are helpers that you can enable or disable from the main menu. So those are sort of cheaty and uh, I felt like I got flack for that but uh, during the live stream. But anyway, uh, I'm glad I have them because they're really helpful. So we're going to use them. I sort of initially thought of them as runway lights and that I was supposed to go between them. You know how runway lights are on the side of runway and you go between them to line yourself up and that's how I'm orienting right now well after sort of a fly around because it's tough to get your bearing and I was also sort of delaying until daylight 
because it's hard to see Gina right now. But you can sort of see the lights and how I'm trying to line up between them and how our little pole is uh, in line with the antenna pole on the Gina too. So just doing the normal docking thing. And at this point I'm trying to go between the two, but that isn't actually what you're supposed to do. What it is is one of the one set is actually for the commander and the other set is for the pilot and you're just supposed to line those squares up. So here I'm still trying to go between them, but that's not really what they're supposed to be for. And ultimately I take a peek outside, another little cheaty thing we get to do, and realize that that's not the right way to go. But Thankfully, I was just approaching very slowly. Apparently, you'll just float right through Agena if you don't make the docking, but I didn't get to that point. I was very careful, I swear. So, uh, yeah. So I realized that, and now I'm lining up the little boxes. But you can see, uh, at this range, the Agena is hardly visible. So, it's possible, uh, what what you probably ought to do is line it up perfectly and then sort of float in, but it's, it'd be really tough. It'd, it'd take quite a lot more practice, which of course the astronauts actually did have uh, in their ground sims. I mean, the ground sims were not as sophisticated as re-entry itself, uh, the ones that the astronauts had to deal with, although they were physically manifest, you know, they had stuff hanging from the ceiling and, uh, you know, gantries and everything, moving their spacecraft towards the target and all that business, but I think this is probably a better way to train, frankly. Okay, there we go. That is a docking. And I got the little achievement in the corner. I didn't even notice the achievement. I was wondering whether I'd float through or not at that point. Uh, so, yeah, well, that is... That is an achievement, yes. I was very pleased with docking and everything. But now I wanted to do an orbital EVA. First they told me to turn off the lights and activate some other stuff on Agena with the encoder. So I went about doing that. But yeah, I wanted to EVA and float around the Agena. So we need to depressurize the cabin. Don't try and open it up with the cabin pressurized. So we're turning off the thruster system because we don't want those firing at us while we're floating around. And this is depressurization right there. So cabin pressure is going down on that needle. And once it's down a certain amount, we can shut that depress off and then open the cabin up. So there's a toggle hatch button right there. That's open now. And at the window, there should be... Oh, there's an EVA button at the bottom of the screen there. Can I see it? Can I see it? There, yes. Okay, so here you have 30 seconds worth of propellant in the little T-bar sort of thruster that we have to control ourselves. Now this functions more like an MMU than anything else, so not exactly how it is because they were generally tethered to the spacecraft. We don't really have a tether in this case. And I try to figure out exactly what on my controls I should be doing. Uh, it's One other thing is that rotation does not require any fuel in this case. I don't know if there's a setting for that. It might be a realism setting uh, to have rotation take fuel, but right now rotation does not take fuel. So it's all just forward and backward taking fuel. And I said about I wanted to get to the tail end of a Gina and then come back. So just very carefully aiming there. Obviously, I have to keep in mind how all this stuff works. Fortunately, we have some experience from Kerbal Space Program, but... Also, in Kerbal Space Program, you don't use any fuel to turn, I don't think. Strictly speaking. Anyway, so that's the full view of the spacecraft. I don't get down to using a Gina to boost my orbit. That'll be another thing. But here we are at the tail end of Agena, and it's Bell Engine. And I flip around. Uh, on the opposite side of Agena, it's dark, so I decided I wouldn't hang out there for very long. Then I noticed on the trunk of Gemini, there is a little Get button. So I decided to move towards the Get button to see what I could get. 
And what I could get was 60 seconds extra fuel, so that's important to note. Uh, so I boosted it up to 82.5. Uh, so total of 30 seconds of fuel available. But I didn't make too much use of that. In fact, I think I ended up going into the spacecraft again without having used that 60 seconds. So, yep, just a little bit of floating about. I don't know if there's any practical thing to do out here with the Agena. Like, Mike Collins was supposed to grab an experiment from Agena or put a... Uh, I think grab something and put something on. But I did not do that. I just went in after having some fun, hopefully taking some pictures, and I repressurized the cabin. So, as I repressurize the cabin, I hope you enjoyed this little example of how to dock in re-entry. It wasn't the most perfect thing. I need a whole lot more practice, uh, and so I'll probably be doing that. Uh, I need a lot more practice with all the stuff, because it's been a while. But anyway, with that little enjoyable escapade, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.